one. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for being present for our Monday, June 8th special meeting yet again of the Town Council to talk about economic recovery issues. Can I have a roll call, please? Thank you and good evening. Councilmember Rennie. Here. Councilmember Syok. Here. Vice Mayor Spector. Here. Mayor and Chair Jensen. Here. Again, thank you everyone for being present tonight. I know it was short notice and I appreciate it. Um, that said, do I have anyone that wants to speak on verbal communications? Verbal communications being the portion of the meeting where you can talk about something that's not on our agenda. The only thing on our agenda tonight is a discussion of basically what type of barriers to put along those areas that the council has already designated can be used by businesses along North Santa Cruz and East Maine. Um, and the allocation of funds for those uh, barriers. If you want to talk about something that is not just what I summarized, now's the time to do it and you have three minutes. I have one person who is identified on my screen as Greg V2. Hey guys. Could you give us your name, please? Greg Van Andries. Hi, if you're going to talk about the proposal that we received as a desk item earlier, that is actually on our agenda because you are suggesting it as part of the barrier system, as I understand it, unless Mr. Schultz tells me that's different. Well, if that's the case, then please proceed. I, I think it's actually included uh, as just a part of the discussion. And Mr. Schultz is nodding his head, so we'll wait until we get there and call you back. Anybody who wants to talk about something not included in it, let's let me call it this, the streetscape for those areas the town is designated for use by businesses and restaurants. Okay, I see one, Mr. Burke. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is kind of ancillary to this is what you've been discussing for the last couple of weeks. Um, but I think we all agree it's critical that we help our current businesses survive. And to that end, I was really saddened to see the pay up or quit notice on Sir Latab uh, this weekend, you know, five days, pay up in five days or, or vacate the building. Um, I don't know how many of more of our existing businesses are going to get hit with notices like that. To that end, um, I know this, this town's doing a lot of concessions, a lot of uh, streamlining. I would very much like to see that streamlining apply to current businesses, not necessarily the replacement businesses the landlords might bring in, because I don't think that this should enable them to have another negotiation car in their pocket that says, oh, with the streamlining permit, I can get a new tenant in here real fast, so I'm not going to work with you. Um, you know, I'm not suggesting any of them are doing that, but just in the back of my mind, I see that as a possibility. Um, secondly, I think it is important that what the town is doing now really be noticed that this is temporary. We don't want businesses, especially new businesses, building their business plan around having these parklets where they can have outdoor dining on public thoroughfares um, or public right-of-ways. Um, I remember it was back in the fall when somebody spoke about the new restaurant going in at Montebello Way and Main Street, and they said, oh, they need four parklets. That's the only way their business plan works. And I don't think we want to be getting in a situation where when what we're doing now goes away, the businesses say, well, we can't survive, even if the business climate is normal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Any questions for Mr. Burke? Seeing none, anyone else want to talk to us about something that is not on our agenda tonight? I don't see any hands. Uh, before I turn it over to, I believe Ms. Ren, you'll be doing our report. Um, just to remind those of you that have joined us tonight and to remind council that we did take action on this on May 26th. There was a motion um, that was then affirmed in a resolution on June 2nd to set aside funds to eliminate street parking along the C2 district, uh, except for designated curbside pickup. 
uh, and allow use of town uh, right of ways and parking lots. So uh, the discussion tonight should really be on how does that get implemented? Not, I wish you would change it. Um, that said, of course, we are open to listen to what people have to say. So Ms. Wren. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as the mayor just introduced, we are back this evening to discuss, to bring the discussion back to you regarding the Community Vitality and Economic Recovery Initiative. Um, since May 26, the staff has been working with the businesses downtown. We've been working to identify a vendor to help uh, to bring in the planters that were part of the motion. Um, since then, the county has also changed the regulations. They opened up much quicker than we were expecting and allowed uh, dining to start taking place on Friday. The, this past Friday the 5th. Uh, the lead time we found on the planners is about 8 to 12 weeks out and understanding that that won't work for um, what we understood the motion to be. We're back this evening to talk about an interim plan. In your desk item you received some maps. The idea is that we will or we're asking you if we should put in some temporary K rail in the interim and then replace that with parklets down the road to meet the motion on the, that was made on the 26th. Um, or if you all have some other ideas, those were outlined in your staff report. Um, so I won't go over each of them, but to the extent that you have questions on them, uh, staff is all here to support you this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Wren. Um, questions for staff. And then for those of you who haven't joined our meeting, this came up last time, haven't joined us for a meeting before, we'll listen to a staff report from uh, whoever is appropriate, a member of our staff. The council will then ask questions, we'll invite public comment, for three minutes, the council may ask the speaker questions during that time. Uh, once that's concluded, we'll close the public hearing. So if you've spoken during your three minutes while the public hear is, hearing is open, you do not speak again. Uh, and then the council will discuss uh, what we've heard and then make motions and conclude. So given that, council, do you have any questions for Ms. Wren? I see none. So because um, Greg, you, began first and I cut you off. I'm going to call you first if you'd like to speak and then I'll move to the next. And if you'd like to speak tonight uh, and you have the latest uh, version of Zoom, uh, go down to where it's, put your cursor where it says participants, click on the little people and you'll be able to raise your hand. And once you do that, I can see you and I will call on you as your name comes up. So, Greg. Hi guys. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'll keep this brief. I've lived here in Los Gatos for, I don't know, geez, close to 30 years. Um, love the town, uh, love what's going on. Don't love the COVID, obviously. Uh, concerned about our local merchants, obviously. Uh, I put a little uh, proposal up on Nextdoor uh, a few days ago, four days ago, I believe. And it's gotten a bit of traction. And I guess my first question is, is have you had a chance to take a peek at what some of the community is saying about the proposal? And number two, have you, con I, I know multiple times this issue has come up uh, before about closing North Santa Cruz to automobile traffic. Um, but my question is, is have you done any kind of cost benefit analysis uh, for closing North Santa Cruz uh, versus the parklet expansion program. Um, from what I saw in the agenda packet, the projected cost for parklets is anywhere from 100 to 700K. Um, and uh, frankly, I don't know what the costs are to close North Santa Cruz either on a semi-permanent or permanent basis. But some of the comments uh, that occurred in the Nextdoor forum uh, were quite intriguing, um, which included a, a temporary closure of North Santa Cruz just on the weekends to allow shopping and dining to expand out on North Santa Cruz. Um, but I did review the agenda packet and I noticed all of the proposal um, or the proposal for the, the parklet expansion. And I feel like those two ideas uh, are very complementary to each other. So uh, I'll take my questions offline or your answers. Um, Okay, uh, so 
we don't normally answer questions, but I will say to you, sir, that we did discuss all those items that you raised on our special meeting on May 26. You can go back and watch it and see what the motions were and what the cost analysis was. The council has now made a motion to close off parking, but on North Santa Cruz, but not the street. Um, and now we're going to determine tonight how we're going to do that. But normally we don't um, answer questions questions you give us information and yes we all saw your proposal thank you um, any questions for the speaker seeing none thank you very much sir andrea romano thank you madam mayor and the council for the opportunity to speak i just want to let you know we're having issues with comcast in our neighborhood so i apologize i'm happy to restate anything that i say uh, my name is Andrea Romano, and I'm the board. I'm on the board of the Chamber of Commerce, and my husband and I own Chentanova and Chin Chin restaurants in downtown. I want to first thank you for the swift, swift action you took last week to approve the revitalization budget, and I want to take this opportunity to keep to encourage you to keep the momentum going. We understand your team is working on options to provide barriers around parking spaces for businesses to utilize as they wish. Furthermore, we understand they are looking at options including planters and K rails. I wish to impress upon you that time is of the essence. While I appreciate the planners will be more aesthetically pleasing, the lead time and costs are prohibitive. And Monica already mentioned that it's going to be at eight to 12 weeks out, which is obviously not going to work. Uh, we recognize there's some trepidation for the use of K rails following the public response during last year's North Santa Cruz one way experiment. Their use in this capacity is very different. This placement will allow businesses to decorate, paint, post signs, or wrap them as they like. Additionally, with proper messaging and socializing of the reasons why they are being used, our guests will understand and support them. The chamber is set and ready to help you with the communications. We just need to get the plans in place and roll the solution out. I encourage you to approve the placement of the K-Rails and a simplified process for requesting them. Businesses are ready for this and they are anxiously awaiting your, their implementation. Additionally, businesses appreciate all of your support and let's get the town of Los Gatos open safely for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Romano. Any questions? Thanks very much. Randy Chen. Hi. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to sound a lot like Andrea. Um, but uh, Randy Chen, uh, Chamber of Commerce, thank you very much for your support of our businesses and your willingness two weeks ago to agree to help them by utilizing the parking spaces in front of their location. It was our understanding that the resolution you passed in, included flexibil flexibility. Although ideally we wanted planters as opposed to K-Rails, the town was going to remain nimble, act quickly, to have the most immediate impact and be ready to pivot when necessary. It is imperative that we get some type of barrier up as soon as possible so our businesses can get back on track. If planters are going to take eight to 12 weeks, then let's put up K-Rails tomorrow. The chamber is ready to do a proactive campaign touting the K-Rails as the best solution right now. We should allow the businesses to dress them up by painting them, putting up planters, et cetera. Um, we discussed having these parklets all the way down North Santa Cruz and Main Street. We don't have to do that. Monica has worked with the businesses um, to identify the locations of these temporary parklets. Um, many businesses would like to keep their parking or even add a curbside pickup space. I hope you can reach a consensus tonight that we should do whatever it takes to create these parklets now. We can't afford to let our businesses go another day without doing what we can to help them. I hope that tomorrow I see Matt and the PPW putting K-Rails out in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Chen? Thank you, Ms. Chen. David McGregor Scholes. Thank you, Council and Madam Mayor for having me on tonight. Um, David McGregor Scholes. Uh, sorry, thank you, uh, Council, for having me on tonight to speak. Um, my name is David McGregor Scholes, owner of Redemption in downtown and also president of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm just going to, again, echo the need for uh, speed on the imp implementation of the K-Rails. Um, from the point of view of a merchant, um, I think it's important to get them up as quick as possible so the merchants can uh, understand how their infrastructure is going to work, whether they're going to be, what they're going to do with it, whether they're going to 
do the um, the uh, inventory outside or whether they use it for a waiting space, but just being able to understand how it's going to work with their business, I think is is imperative to, to so they can get onto that as quickly as possible. Um, our store in particular, uh, we are located right next door to Apple um, and we've already noticed just the build up of customers right across our front door is starting to be a bit of an issue. We are planning to open this week and I've already had, had to have a discussion with one of the managers there about how they're going to manage the uh, the lines. Um, so us personally having the our space to be a waiting space and I'm assuming Apple next door will have their car park be a waiting space as well. That's going to be really important for us so that people are actually able, are even able to walk in the doors without kind of having to, again, walk through a bunch of people waiting. Um, I do believe that they're just the appearances right now, I think are less important than the actual functionality of the whole setup. And if, but if there is clear communication to the merchants that these can be customized, the K rails are able to, to be worked with and that merchants can work with them to make them uh, personalize and uh, change them or add to them as they see fit. I think that will also go a long way to Again, the mitigation of um, the trepidation of having the K rail set up like it was last year and people thinking they're ugly and that kind of thing. So they know that they're allowed to customize them. I think that will also help the merchants accept it and people, the community accept it in general. And again, thank you for um, getting on this and allowing this to happen with uh, um, shutting down the parking. It's, it's going to be super important for our town to move forward. And I just want to see it happen as quickly as possible, like everyone said before me. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions? Seeing none, I have no other hands up. And I'm going to call it and ah, it's that I wasn't intending to speak, but Maria Risto. Hi, Maria Risto. I apologize. I thought I had raised my hand. Um, I am in full support of the request to get the K-Rails up right away as well. I think one of the questions, well, first of all, I think it's critical to have this outdoor space right now. I mean, since Friday, people have wanted to eat outdoors. Um, there's tables set up stores. I'm not comfortable dining until I know I'm separated from people walking two inches away from my head. So I'd be more comfortable in a parklet. I have not heard from the previous speakers if they would prefer ultimately for the K-Rails to be replaced by the planters. And I'm thinking that ultimately that would be the best decision because we're talking about having these parklets in place for the remainder of the year. And so ultimately it would be friendlier and nicer. Um, on the other hand, one option to consider would be put in the K-Rails, let people customize them and wait a week to order the planters and see are people happy with just the K-Rails or their embellishments or is the decision to ultimately go to planters. Um, anyway, I, I also hope to see them going out tomorrow so that by the middle of the week and next week, we've got full, vibrant, active usage of these former parking places and we don't have to spend time painting parking spaces because they're going to be people spaces. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Risto? Seeing none, Sue Farwell. Okay, uh, real brief. Um, I just echo the sentiments of everyone who's spoken already. Um, I do believe that the K rails need to go up tomorrow morning. Um, I also believe that they should only go up for those restaurants or those stores that are requesting a parklet. And uh, I think when these restaurants take ownership of these uh, K rails, you're going to see a different look than what was there during the trial period when they're just placed randomly, um, specifically not to be used by outdoor dining. Um, I think it's critical uh, to the survival of our uh, businesses. Ms. Farwell, you cut out. Maybe you've got a um, connection issue. How about, can you hear me now? Now, now yes. Okay. Uh, so I do, I do believe that um, as each restaurant takes owner ownership of these K-Rails, that you'll see some unique, colorful designs. You're going to have different chairs, different tables, different umbrellas, you know, different heating sources. They're going to look unique. They're going to look individual. Um, the cost of 500,000 for planters, I believe is prohibitive. Um, and I think that we need to just pause on the planters, move the K rails, take two weeks, 
just like Sarah Cody, see what the K rails look like. And if these restaurants um, want to uh, switch out for the planners, perhaps we're not getting so many planners and we're not spending, maybe we're only spending 150,000 on them, maybe only 200,000. So I think ordering all the planners would be a mistake. I think moving on the K rails uh, instantaneously is key. I think we're going to get a nice look at these planners, even with the K rails. Uh, that's it. Questions for Ms. Farba. Seeing none, Michael Burke. On, on a different point. Hi, this is actually Lynn Kennedy on Michael Burke's computer. Um, I'm glad to hear that everybody wants the K-Rail placed up now and they're going to decorate and customize it. Um, as a neighbor and consumer, I feel entirely differently about K-Rail this year than I did last year. That's terrific. Let's make the most of limited funds um, and skip the idea of uh, expensive planners in August or September. Um, all this is going to need to come down before the Thanksgiving shopping um, season and, and uh, seasonal rains. Uh, and as I said in my letter that you may or may not have seen because it came late, you know, what about renting some great big trees and planters or something to um, add to the ambiance and comfort of these new parklets um, to provide some, some shade and really a pleasant place to dine uh, in these, these temporary customized spaces. Um, I also, I only glanced briefly at the map. Uh, I'm thrilled that staff is really working with the businesses to see who wants parklets and who doesn't. I didn't see Village Lane on your maps, but I, I think it's included. I think that's terrific. I'm very happy to see you expanding, um, you know, through the customization, making sure that um, multiple locations, even if they're on little side streets like that, um, can get some parklets. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Kennedy? I see none. I have no other hands up. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing and look to the council for any questions they may have with staff. Mr. Rennie. Well, mine's not really a question. I'm really, I'm ready to give my comments. Okay, I actually have a question. So does anyone have a question? All right, I'm gonna ask my question then. Uh, two questions. I don't know if this is for Mr. Morley or somebody else, but, um, so the town is committed to spending money to block off parking, which I voted for and I think is a great idea. And we're now debating how we're going to temporarily block off parking. I'm just wondering what the cost is if we just made a sidewalk. What would that cost? And how long would it take? And is it ridiculous? Um, just curious, Mr. Morley. Thank you for the question. Yeah, so um, a, a sidewalk's a little more difficult than just pour, pouring concrete um, where the parking is currently. It's probably a 10 to $13 million project to do that. Uh, so a, a big a big project to make something like that happen. There's more than, than sidewalks. There's um, there's grading that needs to be done, slopes that we need to be um, paid attention to, storm drains that need to be moved, um, a, a whole a whole plethora of things that will need to be incorporated to, to make such a project happen. Okay, well, I'm an idea guy. I was not expecting $13 million. Um, see, my other question was, uh, with respect, the motion on May 26th was quite clear to block all the parking on North Santa Cruz except for designated curbside pickup. And I'm just curious about, and frankly, I still think that's a good idea. And one of the main reasons I think it's a good idea is for a safety factor. And whoever can answer this question, I would just imagine that cars trying to get in and out of parklets around K rails is just a bad idea for safety and bicyclists and walkers and whoever all else. Is there any actual answer to that? So I think from a safety perspective, the, the K roll and the setups that we've that we've planned for will uh, provide enough protection. Um, but it is a challenge and uh, to, to your point, it is a challenge to parallel park along Santa Cruz in the best of situations. And when we start adding obstacles in there, it certainly has the potential for, for um, resulting in a few additional bumps along the way. I don't think there's an issue or challenge for, for pedestrians or 
bicyclists, um, but but certainly certainly for those that are parking in the in the uh, areas that are remaining as parking would be. Thank you. I meant pedestrians and bicyclists getting hit by people trying to park. Um, oh. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, Mr. Rennie. Thank you, Mayor. I'll give you my comments, and I might as well make it a motion and see see if it goes anywhere. So. Number one, I'd say K-Rail as soon as possible. That's kind of a no-brainer. Um, allow businesses to decorate the, K, the K-Rail um, and then make a determination later whether to replace them with, with planters. I don't think we should spend the money yet. This, you know, The K, K-Rail may be good enough. Um, I think we should only put K-Rail where businesses have requested it um, rather than up and down the whole street. And as you s- just talked about, there could be some issues with parking. So you can't have one space, not one space, one space, but do it more in, in, in blocks. My concern, going off a little explaining before the other items, with doing the whole street is all the businesses won't decorate them and you're going to look like a construction zone if you have K-Rail up and down the whole street. If you have businesses taking ownership for their areas and decorate them, and there may be some places, and this is another item that um, the town should decorate some places that that are not um, uh, decorated by businesses. But I'm I'm saying limit the K rail, not do it all the way up and down the street. Focus more on where the businesses are. Um, be flexible to add more in a few weeks if some businesses decide that they do need it. Um, so again, at this point, I'm saying let's focus on the businesses that say they do want it and then the places that they want it. And of course, you know, add or as needed to, to make it make sense for, for parking. Allocate, make sure we allocate the curbside pickup and, you know, clusters of curbside pickup to make sure we, um, you know, for what is what is needed for pick, pickup. And I think we should keep as much general use parking as, as possible. If we put K-Rail up and down and big blocks of the street, nobody does anything with the parking spaces we've given them, we've lost parking. We've got K-Rail that's not gonna look good um, in, in those sections. It's gonna look more like a construction zone. Um, I th- think that covered all my points. Hey, Mr. Rennie, you said at the start that you might make this a motion. Do you yeah. want to make that a motion? Because yes, what please. I heard is K Rail. All right, let me make sure that I heard you correctly. K Rail immediately reconsider planters at an appropriate time. If there comes an appropriate time, designate curbside uh, pickup areas, allow uh, businesses pick and choose where their K, their K Rail goes. Uh, I think that and allocate the funds. Was that your motion? Um, you missed the parts that you won't like. <laughs> well, no, I already said that. The, the part about um, L- limit. The part limit. about pick and choose the. Uh, yeah, the pick and choose. Yes. And then I also said be flexible that in a few weeks, if if and some more businesses decided, oh yes, we would like to do it, that we okay. would consider that. Of course, again, there's going to be so Matt's going to have to create some kind of master plan that makes sense for parking, and you know, be flexible if it makes sense to add. And the only thing I, I didn't add to summarize Mr. Rennie's motion was also that businesses are at liberty to direct as to decorate the K-Rail as they choose. Yes. Correct? Yes. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second. Councilwoman Sayak. Okay, there's the motion and a second. Any comments on the motion? Uh, Vice Mayor Spector. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to be supporting the motion. Uh, My thoughts on K-Rail pre-pandemic and post-pandemic are really different. Uh, and so I understand that it's a practical thing to do. Uh, I agree with, uh, I think it was Jim Foley was the first letter that I read uh, where he said, go forward with the K-Rail, uh, you know, don't wait uh, and spend needless money on planters. So I agree with the motion. I agree with Mr. Foley. I agree with what I've heard here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um- I will support the motion, though I, I, I had made the original motion that passed unanimously for a reason to close all the parking, because as people decide that they might want to use that, it's available, rather than the town having to go in and construct things or get new K-Rail or whatever it might be, and that as people get used to that environment, they might put chairs in those other parking spaces, whether somebody's 
decorated it or not. So it gives people options and it makes it clear where the curbside pickup is. But that said, I am not going to hold up the K rail for that issue because I think it's very important that we get this started. Um, and I can't resist Mr. Rennie to just throw in um, that if you're concerned that our downtown is gonna look like a construction zone, you business owners who are on this now, please take the boards down. Um, <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna call the question as a roll call vote. Uh, Councilman Sayak? Yes. Vice Mayor Spector? Yes. Mr. Rennie? Yes. And the mayor votes yes, it passes unanimously. And thank you, Mr. Rennie, yes. Um, possible second motion question for staff. So in that motion, I didn't give the town manager authority. She, staff had originally suggested some 750K. I don't think that number is the correct number anymore. So the question is, do you need a motion for authority to make sure that we move smoothly? Yes, Mr. Please, Reddy, we or Ms. Murray? I'm sorry, yes, if we could have a, a authority, you could lower it to 125, $125,000, uh, and that would allow us the room to, to get the K-Roll and have the flexibility to add um, K-Roll should additional businesses require or request it. So, Mayor, if I could make the motion to give them, um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious, Mr. Wally, did you mean reduce the 750 by 125 or did you mean 125 total? 125 total. Okay. Yes, Ms. Rennie, go ahead. I would just say, let's make it 150, give them authority to spend up to 150 on this. That would be my motion. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Second by the vice mayor, I saw your hand up first. Any comments on this motion? Okay, roll call vote again. Councilman Rennie? Yes. Vice Mayor Spector? Yes. Councilwoman Sayok? Yes. And the mayor votes yes. Thank you very much. Anything further tonight, Ms. Gravetti? Thank you, Mayor. I just would, um, if it's all right, I'd like for Mr. Morley to just describe for all of our audience and for the council what the timing for K Rail is, um, because we want to make sure folks have the correct expectation as to what they'll be seeing next. So, um, Director Morley, could you um, enlighten us as to that? Certainly. So, we do have the vendor queued up and ready to go. We expect to be able to start setting K Rail on Wednesday of this week. Um, it's going to be more than one day's worth of work, uh, but it'll, we'll do Wednesday, Thursday at this point. Um, we'll start early. It'll be a 4 a.m. start so we can get most of the work done um, before traffic gets into town. Um, and hopefully we'll have the work completed by Thursday, uh, Thursday afternoon uh, and be out of the way and have K-Rail in place for, for the weekend for dining uh, and, and other uses. So uh, that, that's the plan at this point. Um, uh, of course, always pending, pending the vendor's availability. They, they indicated early this afternoon that they'd be able to make that happen. Thank you, Mr. Morley. Anything else before we adjourn? Um, yes, and yes. then um, if we could just recognize economic vitality managers so that way she could explain what's expected of businesses as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Pavetti. Ms. Wren? Hi, thank you. So um, we have a package prepared for businesses. I have spoken directly with most businesses that have a parklet in front of their space. Um, we do have an application and an agreement that need to be completed in the interest of keeping it streamlined and quick. Um, I will provide those documents to each person in their email tonight. Um, they can fill them both out and submit them simultaneously. There is not a fee to submit the application. Um, and then we will work as quickly as possible to get all of those executed and back so that there is no hold up on the paperwork sign. Everything's ready to go when the parklets are up. Thank you, Ms. Wren. Uh, and so I'm gonna take this opportunity to thank the staff, Ms. Wren, Mr. Morley, Ms. Betty, Mr. Schultz, everyone else who's worked on this for working so hard to get this up and running so quickly. Thank you very much for making yourselves available and making this work. And with that, if you have nothing else, we are going to adjourn. Thank you, everyone, and have a good evening.